This DVD on physiotherapy assessment for pelvic floor rehabilitation includes two sections, a section on physical assessment and a section on pelvic floor assessment. Now in the first section of the video, Stephanie Sheffi will perform the assessment and I will be the patient. In the second part of the video, I will perform the pelvic floor assessment, first on an anatomical model, then on a standardized patient. The physical assessment in standing includes calculating the body mass index, a postural assessment, a balance assessment, a gait assessment, and a lumbar mobility scan. Next, we look at the alignment of the chin over the symphysis pubis. The chin should be directly above the pubis. If, for example, a client presents with a protracted cervical spine, this can also contribute to increasing the pressure on the anterior part of the pelvic floor by shifting the center of gravity forwards. If a patient has an increased lumbar lordosis, this may also increase the transmission of intra-abdominal pressure onto the anterior pelvic floor. The same thing can be seen with an increased thoracic kyphosis, which may also increase the force exerted on the anterior pelvic floor by intra-abdominal pressure. Now the assessment in sitting. Madame Dumoulin? First of all, in this position, we examine the client's typical sitting posture. It is important to observe the position of the feet on the floor, the position of the pelvis, and the shapes of the lumbar, thoracic, and cervical curves. It is also important to ask the client if her weight is equally distributed on her ischial tuberosities. We should also suggest to women who experience urine leakage when sitting to sit more upright, taking their thoracic spine away from the back support and to maintain their lumbar lordosis. This stimulates pelvic floor muscle activity in sitting and may help to control urgency. Next, we will assess for diastasis recti. Please bend your knees. However, for the purpose of the video, so that it is easier for you to see the test, Chantal's legs will be less bent than they should be. Put your little finger in the umbilicus and the other three fingers above. Then ask the client to lift her head and shoulders up off the table. Then measure the number of fingers between the two sides of the rectus abdominis. Here we find a separation of one finger between the muscles. No diastasis. One or two fingers are normal. Three or more finger separation indicates a diastasis recti. The assessment of respiration is done in four steps. First, the observation of deformities of the thorax. Second, observing the breathing pattern. Third, the assessment of diaphragmatic movement. And fourth, the assessment of diaphragmatic lift. Next, I'll assess diaphragmatic lift. I put one hand on the abdomen between the ribs. I ask the client to take a deep breath in and then to breathe out completely. And then, at the end of exhalation, to suck the diaphragm up and in. You look at the angle of the hand, which should be about 45 degrees. You can relax now. A diaphragmatic lift of less than 45 degrees may indicate that the diaphragm remains in a lowered position, which can contribute to elevating the intra-abdominal pressure and increasing the pressure on the anterior pelvic floor. 